Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this weekly Svelte, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be converting a React component to Svelte. Now, this video is primarily going to be interesting for those of you who are not Svelte experts, as in anyone who has written some React code or might be interested in learning Svelte, well, we're going to be taking a very simple React counter and turning it into a Svelte component, talking a little bit about some of the benefits and strategies, but also the, the strategies of doing a React to Svelte conversion. So uh, even if you are maybe experienced with Svelte, maybe that aspect of it could be interesting to you as well. So what do we have here? We have a very basic counter example, and this counter allows you to just update the counter. Now to explain the React code here, we're importing React from React, we're having a function, we have a state, uh, a state React state using react.use state with the default value of zero. Then we have the counter variable itself, as well as the update count function. Then we have a function to increment the count where you run update count. We take the previous value of the count and then return the previous value plus equals one. So to increment it by one. Then we return a fragment here and then an h1 count counter a button where we have an on click event that will then run our increment counter function, which then again runs this function. So if we were going to rewrite this as a Svelte component, there's a lot of ways you could do it. But if we're doing a conversion as if we're taking the react code and straight up just moving it into Svelte, what's the strategy here? Well, the strategy for this is to copy this whole thing, and then just simply paste it into your Svelte component, like this. And then, like with many of these React to Svelte conversions, we're going to just start up deleting a ton of stuff because it turns out when you move from React to Svelte, you don't need a lot of this junk. So what do we do? We delete the import. Okay, then we can delete this export default function. Then we can step down to the return, delete that return, delete that fragment, delete that fragment, delete the uh, pren and then delete the curly bracket like this. Cool. Okay, so this is a good start, but this is obviously going to still not be real Svelte code. So the next thing we're going to want to do is add in our script tag to separate our JavaScript from our HTML. And we can have a script tag like so. And next, we'll want to maybe fix some of this indenting, remove some of this garbage space here, just get this looking a little bit more. There we go. Okay, cool. Now, what are some other things we'll want to do here? Well, one, we'll get to be able to just remove this, most of this line here, this react use state is equal to zero initially, and then it spits out a variable and then a function. We don't need any of that garbage because what we can simply do in Svelte is just say, let, counter is equal to zero as if we were defining a normal variable. That's right. In Svelte, you do not have to have a function that updates a variable and have that variable even deal with the previous state or any of that stuff. You can just have a variable. And likewise, like I said, you don't need to have a special function that updates the state taking into account the previous state. What we can do is simply just delete all of that and say counter is plus equals one. Okay, so already uh, we're seeing some major benefits here, right? Some extreme ease of, of reading. We no longer have this whole um, confusing mess of we have a function to create a value that spits out an array that you then have to destructure a value and then an updater, you just have a value. And likewise, instead of having to have an updater that takes into account the previous state and return a plus equals whatever, we can just plus equal that variable. That's right, that easy, that simple. And now for the HTML aspect of this, we don't need to do anything with this line. This will remain the same. However, at line number 10, our on click function needs to be changed ever so slightly. In Svelte, instead of having on capital C click, what we do is we say on colon and then the event, right? On anything, on blur or whatever, on click. And this will run the function the exact same way. Now you can see that when we click this, it increments. So that right there is the entire conversion. And what you're going to see first and foremost is a huge reduction in code. We're looking at about 
50% reduction nearly. Now, granted, some people might take offense to that and say like, well, you could have this be an implicit return. Um, okay, um, you don't have to do that. You could inline this increment count function. Sure, you could do that in Svelte too. But either way, uh, this right here goes out to the people who say that React is more explicit and Svelte is more magical. Let me tell you, what is more explicit if you look at these two examples? In Svelte, what is more explicit? You have a counter variable. You update that variable. That variable's value is in your UI. In React, you call a function with a value, okay? That value is then spit out into an array of two separate variables, one of which is a function and one of which is that value. Then to increment, you have to run a function, use the callback, get the previous version, increment it, return it. Also, fragment. We have a fragment in here for just about no reason. I mean, technically, there's a good reason under the hood of React, but in your HTML, this fragment is nothing where in this, the HTML is just straight up nothing. So if you're looking at these two, tell me which of these is more explicit. Uh, this one right here reads way more explicit. Not only that, but it's way more clear what you have here. You have a counter and you're incrementing that value by one. That's it. So this is really what it takes to convert a React component to Svelte at its very most basic. Now, we're going to be doing some way more extreme examples of this, showing all types of different kinds of components, maybe even some more intense state management, some use reducer type of situations. But let me tell you, just about every single component that we rewrote in our stack of over 200 plus components had this kind of reduction and this kind of simplicity once we moved it over to Svelte. So. This is going to be the first in many of these videos where we take a straight up React component and convert it to Svelte. If you have a React component that you would like to see me rewrite in Svelte, please leave a stack blitz, a code pen, a gist, whatever in the video comments below. And I will hit that up in another video and show you how to refactor it into a simple Svelte component. Okay, so this is the difference between React and Svelte, but most importantly, this is how you do and handle a conversion from React to Svelte. Now, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, share with your friends, do all that stuff. Uh, we have three weekly shows here on Level Up Tutorials. Right now, we have VS Code Pro Tips on Monday, what is web development on Wednesday, and three on Friday. Friday, we have a weekly Svelte video. Now, we also release a new premium tutorial course every single month on leveluptutorials.com. And what we do there is on all kinds of topics, we have several Svelte courses from Svelte 3D, animating Svelte, building Svelte components, all sorts of things like that, but also React courses and view courses and Figma courses and all sorts of stuff. So if you like all of that, head on over to leveluptutorials.com, sign up to become a pro today, and you'll save 25% if you sign up for the year. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.